Hello, my name is Ethan Garner, and the pest that I'm going to be talking about today is white flies. And one of the ones that I'm going to talk to, talk about in particular is the greenhouse white fly, which is Trilleroides vaporarium, because it is one of the most common that infest greenhouses and other areas like that. So before we start talking about the pest, white flies, it's important to also understand IPM, which is Integrated Pest Management. And within IPM, it deals with using the integration of chemical, biological, and other methods to help suppress, reduce, and avoid pest problems by using socially acceptable, environmentally friendly, and economically practical management decisions. Under the umbrella of IPM falls PAMS, which is the acronym for Prevention, Avoidance, Monitoring, and Suppression. Now, prevention is essentially what it says. It's preventing the pest from entering the site that, that you know, you're wanting to control and, and the like of that. Avoidance is simply avoiding the pest as much as you can. That way you can keep your areas clean and pest free. Monitoring is whenever your pests come into the site and you're wanting to help suppress them and, and kind of keep them under control. That way they don't infest um, to the extent that they can. Suppression is whenever you have the pest established and you're trying to manage it so that way it's, it's not getting too out of hand, but it's not spreading, it's contained, it's staying in a nice area, that way they can't infest other, other populations of the plants that are around. Now, jumping back to the white flies and, and the other pests within, um, within that category, since it's such a, a wide genus with different varieties and species of white flies in it, um, an overview of them is that white flies can lay up to 20 eggs at a time and it only takes 8 days for them to hatch, which means that they have the potential to really infest plant populations, especially in a greenhouse setting where plants are grown so closely together. Now, within after the 8 days when the eggs hatch, um, there are 4 larval nymph stages, which are collectively called instars. Now, Whenever these eggs hatch, each larval stage that happens um, from the, the white fly larvae, they each feed on the sap from the plant and excrete it as a honeydew, which um, is like a sticky sap that can appear on the outside of the leaves. Now this sap really doesn't cause much of a problem, but it's what happens from it being there. It can cause other diseases, it can attract other insects and other pests that can also infest the greenhouse or the plants or any of the cropping system that they're in and cause a huge infestation. Um, so white flies just kind of open the gate for other pests to be introduced to the site and the area. The damage they cause is predominantly only really seen when they're in large amounts. So if you just have one or two or just a couple centrated, you know, with on, with on one or two plants, you're really not going to see that much of a, a problem. But whenever you get heavier infestations, that's when they start to, you know, cause a yellow, yellowing of the plant. They cause a um, silvering of the plant, sometimes depends on the species. And then they can also cause plant distortion or some species of the white flies can cause plant distortion. So, all in all, rarely they can destroy the plant and kill it. It's mainly they either open the door for other pests to come in. And another way that they can possibly kill it is if they're transmitting pathogens. Um, so, let's say that a white fly lands on the plant and it, it's carrying some, um, I don't know, just some pathogen or some disease. If, if that white fly is feeding on that plant, it's going to transmit that disease over to the plant and subsequent plants after that. So that's why it's important to catch these early on. That way you're not harboring diseases in your greenhouse or cropping system. That way it's, it's more contained and, and, and better, better uh, controlled. Now when dealing with the PAMS approach to the white fly and white flies in general, not just the greenhouse one, which is the one that I'm predominantly talking about, um, you're gonna start with P, which is the prevention portion of PAMS. And that's avoiding favorable conditions for the pest development. That means like good sanitation practices and limiting the amount of alternate host activity that uh, can, be, can be around the plants that you're growing. 
Um, considering that white flies are one of the hardest pests to control in a greenhouse, it's really important to catch them at one of this, these early stages. That way they don't progress and become a larger problem. And one of the other one other way to control white fly populations is by eliminating residual white fly populations that were happening before. That way it's clean, it's sanitary, you're starting from a blank slate, that way nothing is being held over from a previous crop, that way you have the entire greenhouse clean. And by, re by removing damp areas and collecting waste in sealed containers, and also by leaving vacant spaces between growing crops, because when you do that you're taking out the host plant material that the white fly will be feeding on, therefore you're disrupting the life cycle, that way they can't grow anymore at all and essentially going to die. Moving from the prevention to the avoidance tactics for, through PAMS, um, it's important to help keep the white flies at bay. That's one of the things about avoidance, is that you need to just keep it as, as much at bay as you can, that way they're not growing anymore, the population, if they're starting, they're, they're not really getting any larger. And by allowing areas to be vacant through their crops, that's one of the main ways to keep the white flies uh, avoided, is by giving them that space where they can't grow, the life cycle is destroyed. And by checking for cracks in the walls or the ceilings of the greenhouse, and by putting up screening and making sure your ventilation system is designed appropriately, you're going to keep them from getting into your crop. That way you're not going to have an infestation um, get any bigger, and you're also helping contain your uh, plant population more closely. Moving to the monitoring system, this is like if they've already gotten a little bit established but they're not too bad yet. Um, you're gonna, you, you might want to set up some little sticky traps in the greenhouse or around the site to help see you know, how many there are actually. That way they, you can actually see like a, a visual representation of the whole crop, maybe set throughout the entire greenhouse. And by scouting around plants to see if there's any, you know, left or, or where they're at, where they're located, that can also really help get a feel for where they're at in the greenhouse and how bad the population of them is. By quarantining some areas of the plants that are, you know, already infested or quarantining plants that are just coming in can help separate where the pests are at. If you're quarantining the ones with white flies in this area and the new plants that are clean in this area, you're going to keep them from getting the white flies and help monitor the ones that are over here. And also just by keeping simple records, you know, and um, writing down where they're at, when, they're, when they were there, how large it's getting, like over what period of time, that way you can help assess the situation better. And moving on to the suppression tactics, this is where other IPM and PAMS approaches haven't really worked yet. Um, and the white flies are still picking up, they're becoming more of a threat, they've released the threshold level, and they're really starting to cause a problem. This is where you want to turn to other methods, like biological control. You can release native predators to the white flies in the greenhouse if it's in a central location. This has been proven to be a substantial help to suppressing white flies. Um, and if that doesn't really work, or you don't see that as being practical, you could also use chemical methods, you know? But one of the main things to be concerned about with that is that you need to be um, knowledgeable on the ID of the white fly, find out what species it is, what primary or prevalent uh, larval stage is present, if any, unless it's just all adults. Um, and also, being mindful of where they're located in the greenhouse. You don't want to just spray the entire thing. You, you, you might would want to kind of control where you're spraying those chemicals. And lastly, it's also important to realize if you're going to spray chemicals, you, should, you shouldn't spray more than um, two consecutive sprayings of, of that chemical um, just to help prevent from resistance. So now I'm going to walk in the greenhouse here just to show um, a couple of white flies that are present here at the Method um, field lab greenhouses. And there are some right on the leaf of this plant here, just like right in there. And then there's also some present on this leaf. 
and I walked around this greenhouse and they sprayed, I believe it was a week or two ago, because I talked to someone that works in here, um, but they've got the population in here under control predominantly, and there's just a couple left. They said that there were a lot more than, the, than there are right now. Um, so that's just a, one of the main PAMS approaches to identifying and helping suppress whitefly populations, predominantly in greenhouses, since that's where I'm at now. Um, thank you.